Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting review. Today we're taking a closer look at Spider-Man 2, the highly anticipated sequel to the successful Spider-Man game. Developed by Insomniac Games and released on PlayStation, this action-packed adventure promises to deliver an even more thrilling experience for fans of the web slinging duo. We'll be diving into the story, gameplay, replayability, and conclusion on if I'd recommend the game myself. Please don't forget to subscribe for more gameplay and updates in the PS5 space. And without further ado, let's swing into action and uncover the story of Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2 kicks off in another rendition of New York, filled with a variety of new friends, foes, and interactions. While the game primarily focuses on Peter, you will be working your way through the lives and dilemmas that both Spidey friends go through. We start with Peter in his new role as a teacher at the local high school, with Miles as one of his students. And this is before disaster strikes, just as with any other Spider-Man at work, and we're shown time and time again how maintaining a normal life and job seem to be out of the question. This manifests through a variety of self-doubts and struggles throughout the game. The game brings back a variety of familiar enemies like Mr. Negative, Lizard, Scorpion, and many more. There's a nice sprinkle of enemies most fans of the series would notice, like Flint Marco as Sandman to kick off the game, as well as some characters only more serious fans would know. Add to the list the characters that are foreshadowing future installments, and there's going to be a villain for just about everyone. The game also does a relatively good job of layering the different strifes of New York City with crimes, side quests, random events, and collectibles. You add to this the ability to seamlessly switch between Peter and Miles, and you have an exciting, action-packed game. As a sequel to the first successful Spider-Man game, Insomniac has refined the swinging experience, making it smoother and more intuitive than ever before. The new physics-based system allows for greater control and precision, enabling players to navigate the open-world cityscape with ease and style. If you're looking for more of a challenge, you can turn on fall damage as well as an added realism option to the web swinging, which will cause you to pull towards the buildings or object your web attaches to. When we continue to dive more into exploration, you'll see that they added the use of a wingsuit, which combined with new slingshots, wind tunnels, and updrafts, you'll find yourself traveling district to district without ever having to touch the ground. All my Spider-Man fans understand the nostalgia and enjoyment that swinging through New York brings, but the new mechanics really improve the movement by adding some variety in how we get across the city. Spider-Man typically gets knocked because we can expect a relatively repetitive combat system, but what we can also expect this year from Insomniac is new elements to combat that can help get rid of that monotony. Aside from a fresh and dodge and the ability to parry, we get a new installment of tools to use, and like we've seen from the hop from the first Spider-Man to Miles Morales, we get a slew of new gadgets in Spider-Man 2. The web shooter, which in my opinion seems to be more effective and useful than in previous Spider-Mans, as well as four other gadgets, which being the upshot, web grabber, concussion burst, and ricochet web. I'd recommend incorporating all of them into your playstyle, but the web grab was easily my favorite, and if you're wanting to dispatch armies in seconds, I'd focus on upgrading that. If you prefer to go quiet though, you'll be introduced to web lines pretty early on in the game. This will give you the ability to set up a vast network of webs above your enemy's head, and you can eventually upgrade this to be able to take down multiple enemies. But if I'm being honest with you, I felt that this was slightly overpowered. It's still a really cool aspect to strategize with when going against large hordes of enemies, I'm just not the biggest fan of taking out whole groups with no combat. I'll save that for Assassin's Creed. I won't dive too much into abilities, but you will notice a variety of new ones which are all complementary to the Spider-Man that you're playing with, as well as in some cases individual suits you're wearing. In a way, it's going to force you to adjust your playstyle not only from a character to character basis, but ultimately as you progress throughout the game. Spider-Man 2 is jam-packed with missions and various content to keep you enthralled in the game from start to finish. Different collectibles, visually stunning cinematics to accompany story missions, deep narrative-driven side missions that grow and change our perceptions of each protagonist involved, and side activities that avoid the common pitfalls of repetitiveness. This all adds to an immersive game that has a standard playthrough time of somewhere around 15 to 18 hours, and if you're going for 100% completion, you can expect to take somewhere around 24 to 28 hours. My overall perception of the game is relatively high, and after completion I'd give it an 8 on a scale of 10. I grew up with Spider-Man being one of my favorite superheroes, so I initially saw this game wearing rose-colored glasses, but as I progressed through the story, the faults in the game started to make themselves clear. Don't get me wrong, there's a ton to do, and if you're wanting a game you can mindlessly grind at times and check off boxes for collectibles. This game has it. 
The graphics and sounds of the game are awesome and add to a busy city bustling with individuals from all walks of life. But the story seems to squash pivotal moments and don't get me started on how overpowered MJ is. The game provides little and limited character building of Miles and with a shorter version covering his background and with having the ability to play as both Peter and Miles, I expected more storytelling in regards to Miles' development and ascension as a hero. But can we take a moment to acknowledge he has his full costume on display in front of an uncovered window? While Miles' story is limited, the opposite is true for Peter. His story was filled with different character arcs and personal decisions that could have been in their own game entirely, yet the transition from one huge moment to the next happened so quickly I felt like I couldn't really appreciate any of it. Aside from changes to the map, the scale of the fallout from each mission seemed minuscule, and this bled into the enemy storylines. Some of these enemies should have had multiple missions around them, yet some were dispatched and made irrelevant almost immediately. You take this and the repetitive nature that comes with Spider-Man games, and at times I felt more like a fly, or should I say spider, on the wall than I did a web-slinging superhero defending the city of New York. I think they did a good job laying the foundations for some characters that we can expect to see in the next Spider-Man game. But all in all, it felt rushed, and even the ending, while heartwarming, seems to fall flat for me. Don't let my negative comments persuade you to thinking it sucks, because I don't want to detract from my enjoyment that I found myself having throughout the whole game. I did get 100% completion, and whether you are a Spidey fan or not, this game will provide fun for most gamers regardless of their gaming preference. So for those of you who did finish the game, what was your favorite moment? And for those of you who haven't, do you plan on playing? I hope this has been informative to those on the fence of purchasing Spider-Man 2, and if it has, please consider leaving a like, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Glad we nipped this nefarious plan in the bud. See what I did there? Yeah, I knew you would.